I like my coal pirate gun. Trigger doesn't work. Okay. Hi. Happy Halloween. We are going to make something yummy today. We are going to make pumpkin brownies. Ugh. And then after we do that, we're going to carve some pumpkins. I have only carved one pumpkin in my life. When I was a kid, my mom would buy paint, like acrylic paint, and we would paint our pumpkins. And it was cool because you could put whatever designs on them you wanted to. You could make them look really neat. But I guess now people are all extra about their pumpkin carving, so you don't need to paint them. But that was always fun. And uh, the leprechaun will be carving his first pumpkin today. He's never carved one before, so I'm excited. So these brownies are delicious. I don't like pumpkin pie. I don't like pumpkin anything. Um, I am not one of those, one of the, a basic white girl, except I am wearing yoga pants and Uggs right now. So maybe like halfway. Um, but I made these and they were really good. And I, gave, I cut one and I gave one to Hitch and he, took a bite and sat down in his chair and he said, this is all I want to eat for the rest of my life. So they must be pretty good. So this is not gonna be one of those things that is super easy, super fast to make. This is a little more involved and it's actually kind of fancy. So we're gonna step out of our norm today to make these brownies. But they're kind of easy to make. This is two different recipes, sort of. The first thing we're gonna make is the brownie. And if you do decide to make these, you absolutely can use a box brownie mix. But honestly, I think it's just as easy to make your brownies from scratch as it is to make them from box. So let's start with that. We're gonna start with our butter. That's somewhere. It's right here. And we are going to do what's called blooming the cocoa powder, okay? So what that means is we are gonna mix our cocoa powder in with, I lost my spatula, in with the melted butter, that, cause it's still warm. And we're gonna kinda let it sit in there while we mix the rest of the wet ingredients. And that's gonna, give your brownie like a more fudgy texture and kind of, I don't know, it helps your chocolate taste a little bit better. So I got our melted butter. Oh, this was one cup of butter. I have three quarters of a cup of cocoa powder. You can use whatever cocoa powder you like. If you like Dutch cocoa powder, which I actually just learned was a thing and I don't really know what it is, I am just using plain old Hershey's cocoa powder. So always wanna, I need a smaller sifter. I always wanna sift your cocoa powder because it, cocoa powder is pretty lumpy and you don't want all those lumps in your brownie batter because then that's just more mixing and whisking and beating that you have to do. And as fun as it is to beat things and people, it just kind of saves you a little bit of work. The floggings will continue until morale improves. <laughs> Anybody know what that's from? Because I don't. Monty Python, I think. Oh, oh, we got some more hiding over there. See, I need a smaller sifter so that because I was sifting flour the other day and half of my flour was on the counter because it came out of my sifty. So, get rid of that. Sandwich cocoa powder's on the counter. I think we made it. Woohoo! All right, and somewhere here I have a spoon. Ugh. So we're gonna stir those two things together. Again, you do not have to do this to your cocoa powder. Since I am making the brownies from scratch, 
I'm just giving you that extra little option, that step you have. Now, another thing we're gonna do to make this super chocolatey is instead of a tablespoon of water, we are going to add a tablespoon of coffee. You'll see my fancy, my fancy little chalice. I think this is the only one left. My mom had a whole set of these when I was a kid. There was like eight of them. Now I'm an adult and I use them as shot glasses. So, so we got a tablespoon of coffee in here. Coffee is really good with chocolate. Coffee really wakes up the flavor of the chocolate and makes it chocolatey. -er. I know it's not a word. All right, so now that we got that all mixed in there, cocoa powder, it smells so yummy. We are going to add, is this empty? This is empty. Three beaten eggs. Now look, I found this frother thing at the Goodwill. It's not gonna work. It's supposed to be, oh. Oh, I don't think it works for eggs. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work for eggs. Okay, so it's, you know, frother, froths your milk and makes you, makes your milk, your milk fancy. I was hoping I could beat eggs with it because that would have been fun. But alas, oh, I need my vanilla extract. We're gonna put the eggs in with the rest of the wet ingredients. I just did all the dishes too, and now I'm just making more. So get them all mixed in. You know what I'm doing wrong here is I'm using a spoon, a metal spoon. I'm supposed to be using a wooden spoon because when Hitch is editing videos, the metal spoon in the metal bowl is the worst sound. It's terrible. All right, so. Next we have one cup of brown sugar and one cup of white sugar. You can use two cups of white sugar if you want, it's not a big deal. Do you see how soft, how soft my brown sugar is? Do you know how to keep your brown sugar soft? If you put a piece of bread in the container with your brown sugar, the bread will get hard and the sugar will stay soft. That is vanilla extract. That is also true with cookies. If you put, um, sorry, if you put a piece of bread on the plate with your cookies, your cookies will stay soft. I always do that with my Christmas cookies. Take people Christmas cookies and it'll have a piece of bread on the plate and they're like, what, what is this? They don't eat it. I mean, I guess if you want to eat it, it'll have all the sprinkles and frosting bits from the, from the cookies on there. So yeah, all these wet ingredients combine and some vanilla, vanilla. I just bought this vanilla extract. Almost, we almost didn't put it in here because we didn't have any and I can't get it open. Thanks, creepy magic hands. That was probably more than a capful. Should be careful. This stuff is like gold. I didn't realize that vanilla extract was so freaking expensive. All right, so we got our wet ingredients mixed here in this bowl. I have one cup of sifted flour and a teaspoon of salt. So we're gonna add our wet to our dry. And this, in this step right here, if you chose not to bloom the cocoa powder, then you would mix your cocoa powder with your flour and salt. 
Gosh, I hope that's going in the bowl. Okay. I had, you know, I had that, that eye surgery a week or so ago, and I still haven't regained all of the vision. I still haven't regained all of the little bit of vision that I had. So we're working on that slowly. Mix all that together. And you see what I mean? Like this is just, this is really just as easy as pouring the mix from the box, adding the oil, adding the eggs, adding the water, mixing it up. I mean, it's, it's the same thing. So I'm sure here, I'm not mixing well. Mix, 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 mix. I've watched this Jamaican lady make keto stuff. She's got a keto channel. And when she's mixing or whisking, she says, mix, 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 mix. Whisk, 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 whisk. And she's adorable and I love her. I can't remember the name of her channel. I wish I could, cause she's super cute. All right. So once your brownie, is all mixed up and yummy and delicious. Take your baking dish. Oh no! You take your baking dish. And I have lined my baking dish with foil because this is gonna be so much easier when this is all done if I can just take the foil out like that and it all come out at once and I'm not having to dig it out of the side of the pan. Plus it's really gonna save me having to wash this pan. Use parchment paper if you want. I didn't have any parchment paper, so. So we're gonna take our brownie and we are gonna lay this in the bottom of our baking dish. Do you wanna lick the bowl? Don't say I didn't offer. All right, spread this out. You're going to move on. It's a heavy bowl. To our pumpkin mixture. To our pumpkin. This basically is pumpkin pie filling. Well, not basically. This is pumpkin pie filling. So we are going to add, this is going to be two eggs, this one, a tablespoon of pumpkin pie spices or pumpkin pie spice. You can buy, you know, the, the already spiced pumpkin pie. You know what I mean? It's all together already. I don't have that. Um, I just used, I used half a teaspoon of ginger, teaspoon and a half of nutmeg, and two teaspoons of cinnamon is what we used for our pumpkin pie spice. So we're going to mix all that together. You're going to add in three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. This is by no means a healthy meal. Um, it's absolutely not a keto meal. This has got five eggs, a cup of butter, all kind. what, two and three, excuse me, two and three quarters cup of sugar. I should have taken an insulin shot before I even made this. Cap full of vanilla. Whisk all that together. I don't know if, because they just sell pumpkin pie filling in the store, like already made. I don't know if that would work with this. If you wanted to, you know, go really fast and use the brownie, use the box brownie mix and the pumpkin pie filling instead of making it yourself. I don't know. I don't know if that would work, but you could try it. You gotta experiment with things to see if they work, right? You don't know if they work if you don't try. I probably could have already had this out of the can 
to save you guys the time of having to watch me scrape it out of the pan. Mix that up a little bit. And I used the tablespoon of pumpkin pie mix, pumpkin pie seasonings because the first pumpkin pie I made was actually just a couple of months ago and I followed the directions with how much seasoning they put in it and Hitch said that it didn't have any flavor. So I used more seasoning in the brownies just because I wanted it to have some flavor. So you can, you know, you can kind of control that, use as much or as little as you like in your brownies. Our evaporated milk. Now we want to whisk, 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 whisk. Until this is good and combined, guys, this smells so good. All right. Let's get our brownie pan over here. Now, we are just gonna try not to spill this. Man, this is gonna be hard. Okay, we are just gonna take this pumpkin pie filling and we are gonna pour it Oh, I'm gonna make a mess. Right on top of our brownies. I wanna to try to get another spatula here. Get all that out of there. All right. I'm gonna lick my finger a little bit now because I'm done cooking with it. Okay, so that's it. Gosh, and this is, this is a beefy thing, like this is heavy. So that's all we do. We're gonna put this in a 375 degree oven for 45 minutes to an hour. What you want is for it to be done, to kind of be a little brown on the edges, but still be jiggly in the middle, um, like that. So we're gonna put this in the oven. We're gonna check it at 45 minutes and see if it's done. It's probably gonna take closer to an hour. So I'm gonna put this in the oven. I'm gonna clean up this mess and then we're gonna carve some pumpkins. So hold on, we'll be back. Oh my goodness. All right. Okay, so does anybody remember the Five Little Pumpkins song from like kindergarten? I spent two days trying to remember it. I finally remembered it a little bit ago and then I asked Alexa and she remembered it. But do you remember? It's five little pumpkins sitting on a gate. The first one said, oh my, it's getting late. The second one said, there are witches in the air. Third one said, but we don't care. Fourth one said, let's run and run and run. The fifth one said, that sounds like fun. So ooh, went the west wind and out went the lights and the five little pumpkins rolled out of sight. Does anybody remember that? I remember we made this little thing and we put, we, we glued pumpkins on a little gate and made the sky and we had the little verse pasted on the paper. I remember that, like from kindergarten, guys, seriously. Okay, we get the lid? We got the lid off. Ooh. All right, and a big bowl for scooping here. Oh, it's so slimy. All right. Those are gross. So did you guys go, I guess I should have made the top, the hole bigger for my hand to fit in there. I don't know. Did you guys go pick out pumpkins? Because we used to go to the pumpkin patch every year and, you know, take a hayride and go out to the field and pick our own pumpkins. But uh, we did not do that this year because of COVID. 
the hayride was canceled. And if I'm just gonna go pick a pumpkin up off the ground and not pick it out of the patch myself, well, I'm just gonna go to the store and do it, right? Okay. Ugh. This is like scooping the guts out of the spaghetti squash. Except I could see inside the spaghetti squash. The only other pumpkin I've ever carved in my life, we did, I did it off of a stencil. There's actually a, a YouTube channel that I watch. They released their own book of stencils for carving pumpkins. So I had Threadbanger pumpkins. If you ever watch um, Threadbanger, Threadbanger, uh, Man versus Pin and all that. I had Threadbanger pumpkins one year. They were pretty cool looking. I had a Corinne Lee pumpkin. Corinne Lee, if you're watching my channel, you're my Shiro, by the way. Hands cramping up. <laughs> it's pretty scraped. All right. I don't know what we're gonna do. Where's the back of it? To figure out what side I want to be the back. So let's put its hat back on here. Like that. This side's bumpy, I think. Yeah, okay. So, got our knife. I don't see how these knives cut into these pumpkins. They're not sharp at all. All right, so we're just gonna start hacking and see what happens. Oh, it doesn't go in Oh, my hand is cramping up from scraping out that pumpkin. So what's your favorite Halloween movie? Tell me in the comments what your favorite Halloween movie is. Mine? Is Pumpkinhead. Have you ever seen Pumpkinhead? Most people look at me like I have a pumpkin head when I tell them that because nobody's ever heard of it. That's very good. I haven't watched it yet this year but when we were in Puerto Rico last year I found it on DVD so I finally own it because it used to be I had to figure out where to watch it every year. I don't know what I've done here, guys. I cannot see. Maybe I should make my pumpkin with no eyes so he can be blind like me. put these out on the porch and nobody's gonna come trick-or-treating here because they're gonna be like those people don't even know how to carve pumpkins we don't want their candy you know what we're gonna call that an eye all hacked up just like my eyes all hacked up I don't know if you can tell by the look on my face, but I'm getting super frustrated. I was really looking forward to saving these pieces of pumpkin for Puerto Rican country beans, but I guess since they're not for consumption, I can't do that. All right, are you guys ready to see the best pumpkin you've ever seen? How does it look? 
Yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we are going to let Hitch carve his pumpkin now because he can see and I bet his is gonna look better. So me and Earl here are gonna get out of the way and let the professionals take over. It's pumpkin time. Hi guys. I have not carved a pumpkin in many, many years. So we're gonna see how well this turns out. I've only done maybe two in my life. It just wasn't a, I don't know. In my family, we just, it just wasn't a thing we did. We did a lot of Halloween decorating. Um, but we just didn't carve pumpkins. That wasn't one of our things. So I've only done this a uh, couple of times in my life. I don't know, maybe it's a uh, something from the area that I come from that people just don't do a lot of pumpkin carving because I don't remember seeing it a lot growing up. I mean, I'm already doing a terrible job taking the top off this thing. Of course, this isn't the greatest knife ever. But, let's see. Yeah, it will pop right off. Yeah, I, I, I didn't go deep enough. So now i got to cut more out. Because this is an extremely thick-skinned pumpkin. Yeah, <laughs> probably good if you're around me to be kind of thick-skinned. That's <laughs> Pumpkin guts. These pumpkins are going to look fantastic on the porch. Amazing even. Downright wondrous. You know why? Because there are pumpkins. And if somebody don't like them, well, they can go find other pumpkins to look at. So here we are. The pumpkin. Does it have a name? Numero dos. What's that? Does it have a name? Uh, just Master Pumpkin. Master Pumpkin? He likes to be called Master Pumpkin. Okay. So, there he is. Alright, up next is the Leprechaun. Now, he actually is kind of an artist. I think he's going to do a stencil. So, his is probably going to look the best of all of them. Pumpkin. pumpkins um, the leprechauns is the best obviously his first pumpkin ever and he did better than us ours have character so here's our pumpkin brownies his just pumpkin is so tall is our pumpkin brownies these things can I grab one oh yeah they are so yummy. Mm -hmm. It's really good. So, I probably have brownie all over my teeth now. 
that's it for our Halloween episode. So you know what I'm going to tell you. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Blind Girl Cooks. Instagram, and I guess in turn Facebook since everything is shared to it. Instagram, I am currently working on all of the recipes for everything that we've made so far. I'm up to, I think I have, through episode eight. Um, so I'm getting all the recipes written out and put on there, but y'all gotta give me some time because I'm blind and it takes, it literally the other day took me 45 minutes to make one post. So, um, do all of those things. Make these brownies. I wanna see pictures of your brownies. I wanna see pictures of your pumpkins. Tag Blind Girl Cooks in your Facebook post and your Instagram post and all of those things. And we will see you next week. We're gonna start our Thanksgiving series. We're gonna start with appetizers. It's gonna be fun and exciting. So happy Halloween. Bye.